This tutorial will show you how to keep and breed your monsters or upgrade their skills. On the left, you can see the available places and your monsters. Each room has a capacity. The small chamber has room for one creature, the large chamber for two, the dungeon cell for three, the monster kennel for four. On the top center of the screen, you will find the temperature and humidity values for the chamber, and on the right side, the temperature and humidity tolerance of the monster. If a creature lives outside its tolerance zone for a long time, it can become ill and even die. Click on the Varanus Hybrid button. This creature is dehydrated. A red warning message indicates if conditions are not right. Drag and drop its button to move it to the dungeon cell. Good! The Varanus Hybrid will recover for the next turn. Now, look at the base attributes on the top right of the screen. The proportion of the plant food largely determines the monthly upkeep cost, making herbivores much cheaper to keep. Adult monsters can be tamed or untamed. Only tamed creatures can participate in non-lethal combat. Tameness indicates how easy it is to tame a juvenile monster. Resilience shows how well this creature can tolerate magical treatments and potions. This parameter is critical at a young age when extensive treatments occur to improve traits. Insectoids are the most resilient, while carnivores are the least tolerant. Click on the Spider Hybrid button. It is sharing the chamber with the bear wolf that wounded him. Untamed creatures may attack a smaller one, damaging or killing it. Injured monsters cannot fight in the arena. Since they are in the same large chamber, they need to be separated. Drag and drop the bear wolf's button to move it into the small chamber. If there is not enough room in the chambers or kennel, the monsters will live in the courtyard. Untamed monsters can escape, causing troubles in the surrounding villages. The untamed hunter bug is kept in the courtyard. Click on its button and move the hunter bug into the kennel. Monsters gain experience fighting in the arena and earning skill points when leveling up. The hunter bug has an unspent skill point. Open the skill upgrade panel by clicking on the blue icon on the bottom right and select a skill to improve. Fine! Now, open the breeding panel by clicking on the icon at the bottom center. At the very top, you can find the name of the offspring. Below that, you will find two large slots for the male and female monsters. Old, infertile, injured, or moderately sick creatures cannot reproduce. You can only breed monsters of the same class in early access. Drag and drop the bear wolf and hyena wolf into one of the creature slots. You can breed creatures of the same or related species without adding any potion. But in this case, both bear wolf and hyena wolf are hybrids and therefore need to add a crossbreed potion. You will find two of these potions in the inventory each providing a bonus to a specific monster class. Carnivora bonus gives a 30% increase of potion strength and a 30% decrease of side effects when used on a carnivore class monster. Drag and drop a crossbreed potion with carnivora bonus from your inventory to one of the three potion slots. The green icon indicates the number of turns it takes to reproduce these creatures. The section below shows the predicted characteristics of the offspring. Two other potions are also available in the inventory. 
the brew of alteration, and the spawning potion. Brew of alteration causes random mutations that can be beneficial or harmful. The spawning potion can significantly increase the number of offspring. The potion strength shows effectiveness, and the side effect indicates how much abomination it causes in the offspring. Add the other two potions to the potion slot as well. All settings are correct now. Close this panel and click on the Next Turn button in the top right corner. At the beginning of each turn, you'll receive event messages. Read them and open the monster's window. The Northern Hunter Bug has grown up. This creature has received intensive magic treatment that improved its traits, but caused abomination illness. As a result, life expectancy decreased and reproduction time increased to five turns. Open the breeding panel and drag and drop the hunter bug and the northern hunter bug to the creature slot. You do not need any potion to crossbreed related species, but reproduction takes five turns. To reduce the time it takes, add the last remaining potion. The reproduction time has been reduced to one. Next turn, Northern Hunterbug will lay eggs and the Hyena Wolf will give birth to her pups. Congratulations! You have completed this tutorial. Check out the other tutorial on raising monsters. This tutorial will show you how to raise your juvenile monsters and what methods are available to improve their attributes. You can see the available chambers and the juvenile monsters or eggs inside them on the left side of the screen with the inventory below that. You can purchase eggs and creatures from the local hunters or at the annual guild's fair every May. The juvenile monsters will inherit the traits of their parents at random. If both parents have the same ability, all offspring will inherit it. Nothing is known about the monster while it is in the egg. But once it hatches, abilities will become visible. You must raise a creature to know all its abilities. The top middle panel shows the temperature and humidity. A red warning message indicates if environmental conditions are outside the monster's tolerance zone. In this case, treatment is less effective and the creature may become ill or, in severe cases, die. The small dragon is moderately sick because it is too cold in the dungeon cell. Drag and drop its button to move it to the hatchling's cabin. Now, the temperature is suitable, and the small dragon will recover for the next turn. Check out the inventory with potions, blood, and meats on the bottom left side of the screen. With the slider below, you can adjust the amount of food, which affects upkeep cost, strength, and health points. The plant food ratio influences the upkeep cost significantly. Herbivorous creatures are much cheaper to keep. Increase the food amount to the maximum to make your creature a bit stronger. At the bottom of the screen, you can see the progress bar with food supplements slots. The hourglass icon shows the turns left until growing up. The small vertical bar indicates the hatching for reptiles and insectoids. You can add meat or a portion to each slot with drag and drop or double click. Adding meat as a food supplement provides an attack bonus against a specific class of monsters. Double-click on insectoid meat to fill up all four slots. Infusing blood can manipulate temperature and humidity tolerance, affect lifespan, and decrease fear of that particular class of monsters. For this, you need to purchase the infusion device at the annual guild's fair held every May. The basic set can only infuse blood to juvenile creatures. The advanced device can infuse blood and potion, while the grand infusion apparatus can be used on eggs too. Since the small dragon does not tolerate cold, it can be complicated to keep. Carnivora blood significantly improves temperature tolerance. 
Double click or drag and drop the concentrated carnivora blood to the infusion slot. A small info panel appears when you move the pointer over the potion icon. Potion strength indicates how effective it is, and the side effect shows how much abomination illness it causes. Click on the panther hybrid icon at the left. Abomination illness has developed in this creature's body because of the extensive use of potions during the breeding process. More treatment will surely kill it. If you do not cure this monster, it will become infertile with a short lifespan. Click on the runestone icon in the middle of the screen and select the runestone of purity. There is a slider below the runestone icon. You can change the intensity of the treatment by adjusting the slider. Runestone of Purity is an effective way to cure monsters, but it is not enough now. Add two potions of cure to the infusion slot. Once you have purchased the oracular crystal, you will see the exact level of abomination at the right side of the screen. Click on the snow beetle icon at the left. If there is not enough place in the chambers, creatures have to live in the courtyard. In this case, juvenile monsters can easily fall prey to predators or escape and cause trouble in the surrounding villages. Move the snow beetle to the hatchling's cabin. In the top right-hand corner, you can see the percentage of tameness. The monster becomes tamed if the parameter reaches 100% by the time it grows up. Untamed monsters can only participate in lethal combat in the arena. Tameness increases each turn depending on how easy it is to tame this creature. You can also use potions and runestone to improve taming. Add the two taming potions to the infusion slots. The snow beetle has frostbite and frost protection properties, and the runestone of frost can improve both traits. Click on the runestone icon in the middle of the screen and select the runestone of frost. Magic scrolls can enhance health points, strength, endurance, agility, energy, and magic resistance. To use runestones and magic scrolls, you need to build the hatchling's cabin. Insectoids are fragile and have low health points. Click on the scroll icon and select the scroll of vigor. When you click on the next turn button, the potion of the next slot gets consumed, and the game calculates the effect of the treatments and the increase of abomination. If the monster grows up, a message will appear showing the result of the treatment and the mutations. Treatments are less effective when the temperature or humidity is too high or too low for the creature. Each treatment increases the abomination illness which can cause shortened lifespan, infertility, or even death. You can add potions to the monster's food as a supplement, but if you infuse it directly into the creature's vein, the effect is higher and the side effect is lower. Once a monster has grown up, the player can no longer manipulate its traits. However, it can gain experience in the arena, level up, and upgrade its combat skills. These skills cannot be passed on to the next generation. Well done! You have completed this tutorial. Check out all the breeding potions and equipment in the encyclopedia. This tutorial gives an overview of human characters, training, attributes, and equipment. The character panel in the middle has four tabs. From right to left, the Attributes tab, the Equipment tab, Skill Upgrade tab, and the Statistics tab. On the left side of the screen, 
you can see the hired characters and slave warriors. It costs nothing to hire someone, but you need to pay his wages every turn and provide accommodation. Slave warriors are expensive to buy, but have no salary. There are three classes, warriors, archers, and sorcerers. On the right, there is your inventory with available weapons, armor, and potions. At the bottom, you can find the training sliders, which allow you to customize the training of each character. All equipment has a weight that increases the burden of the character. Stronger combatants can wear heavier armor pieces. If the burden is higher than 100%, then the agility is reduced, which can cause a loss of action points. Overburdened characters recover less energy at the beginning of each turn. Robin of Waylon is overloaded. Replace his heavy armor with a lighter one by drag and drop from the inventory into the body armor slot. The shield icon on the right side shows the physical protection and the range between 0 and 100. The icon on the left side indicates the physical and magical damage of the weapon in hand. All characters can carry a secondary weapon on their belt, but that can only be one-handed. Certain weapons provide a bonus. Move the pointer over the icon to see weapon stats. This claymore has a Monster Slayer bonus, which gives 50% extra damage against monsters. Each combatant has four slots available for potions. The antitoxin reduces the effects of getting poisoned. The healing potion replenishes health points. The energy potion refills energy. And the potion of courage suppresses fear. Select Edmund the Slave by clicking on his character button on the left. On his belt, he carries an army sword with an armor-piercing bonus. Heavy armor is less protective against such a weapon. The poison blade in his hand is the only melee weapon you can use with poison on it. Drag and drop the standard human toxin from the inventory into the weapon's poison slot. The shield not only increases protection, but allows the warrior to block arrows coming from the front. Larger ones offer better protection against enemy projectiles, but they also weigh more. Replace the small buckler shield with the heavier round shield. The proper weapon reach is a prerequisite for a counterattack. If the enemy attacks your character with the long two-handed sword, your character can only counterattack if his weapon reach is at least half of the opponent's. He has an agility potion that gives extra action points for one turn. Enchanted armor protects against fire, frost, or shock magic. Select Short Rolf by clicking on his character button on the left. Archers cannot use two handed weapons or shields in the arena, but can wear all types of armor. The only bow that can shoot poison arrows is the poison bow. Some poisons lower health points, others drain energy, or reduce agility. Select Wise Bellin by clicking on his character button on the left. Mages are not allowed to wear armor, making them very vulnerable. They can, however, support others with powerful spells and magic staff. The three most important properties of ranged weapons, such as the staff and bow, are range, accuracy, and damage. The Resist Magic Potion temporarily increases a character's magic protection, while the Mana Potion replenishes mana during combat. Select Robin of Wallen and switch to the Attributes tab. Check the base traits on the left-hand side. Every character you hire has a minimum contract period, and you cannot fire them within this minimum term. Below that, you can see the compensation. If one of your men falls in lethal combat, you must pay compensation to his family. The red fist icon indicates courage. If courage is low, the character will often refuse to participate in lethal combat. 
The trainer skill does matter when you select someone to work as an instructor. This attribute determines the development bonus that the instructor provides. Intelligence has importance during training. More intelligent characters develop their skills slightly faster. Strength determines how much armor he can wear without being overloaded. This trait also affects the magnitude of damage he can inflict. Agility determines how many action points you can spend every turn. An agile character has more chance for a successful attack, block, or dodge. Endurance is critical when fighting prolonged battles. It determines the amount of energy regenerated at the beginning of each turn. Every action has an energy cost. If a character runs out of energy, then he cannot attack, block, or dodge. Unused action points from the previous turn get converted to 1.5 times energy. An attack coming from outside the field of vision is always successful. Vision field is 3 for all humans, but the defensive stance ability increases to 5 for the opponent's turn. The next column shows the abilities the character can use in the arena. One of the most valuable abilities for a warrior is the defensive stance, which provides a defensive bonus during the opponent's turn. Disengage allows it to break away from the enemy without triggering the attack of opportunity. You can spend skill points to gain new abilities. The next column shows fear and physical and magical protection values. Characters can fear fire, frost or shock magic, or monster classes. The increase of fear causes loss of action points and panic. The number of counterattacks determines how many times he can perform a counterattack in the opponent's turn. The attack and defense skills have an enormous impact on the successful melee or ranged attack, parry, and dodge. It is critical to developing the right skills for each character. Shield parry skill is unnecessary for a warrior specialized in two-handed weapons. Meanwhile, an archer with poor marksmanship can only hit a target at a low range. The only way to improve the stats on this tab is training. Let's see the training sliders below. Every slider represents a skill to improve. Increase the slider of the trait you want to develop more and decrease the slider of the less important ones. The green values in parentheses indicate how much that attribute will grow in a year. When you press the next turn button, the game calculates the development of each trait. This warrior wields a two-handed weapon and his endurance is low. Set the slider of the one-handed attack and parry to zero and increase the endurance slider. Good! It is possible to choose one of your characters to work as an instructor. In this case, the instructor will not work on his skills, but will provide a development bonus for the others. Select Edmund, the slave, and check his attributes. His instructor skill is very high, and both strength, endurance, and agility are good, making him an excellent physical trainer. On the other hand, his weapon skills are lower, so he cannot provide much bonus for weapon training. Select him to work as an instructor by clicking the blue icon on the bottom right of the screen. On the bottom section, you can see the number of people he trains and the average bonus he provides. Your combatants can earn experience fighting in the arena, level up, and get skill points. You can spend it on new abilities like defensive stance, quick strike, cast magic, or decreasing the energy and action point costs of attack, parry, and dodge. If one of your characters has an unspent skill point, a blue icon appears next to his name. Select Short Rolf and open the Skill Upgrade tab and choose an ability to improve.
Well done. You have this tutorial shows how to forge weapons, armor, and brew potion. At the top center, you can see how many workplaces you have and how many people are working. The labor capacity represents the amount of work they can accomplish in one turn. You will find the metals, alloys, and crystals at your disposal in the top right corner of the screen. You can purchase raw materials from the local merchants. Look at your blacksmith's traits at the top left of the screen. His skill determines what weapons and armor he can forge and influence the quality of the product, the amount of the raw materials he uses, and how fast he works. Intelligence determines how quickly his skill develops over time. Below the blacksmith, you can see two slots for the apprentices. Apprentices complete their apprenticeship and become a master at the age of 21. Then they become available for hire and ready to work for you regardless of your reputation. You can only have one master, two apprentices, and four slaves working at a time. You have two unassigned slaves who can increase the labor capacity, making it possible to create more items each turn. Assign slaves to increase the labor capacity. No more workplaces left for the second slave worker? You can upgrade the blacksmith's hut or assign a chamber of the old keep to get more room. There are icons on the left side showing the equipment you have purchased. The annual arms fair is getting held every February. This fair is the only place to buy blacksmith equipment. The Iron Forge makes it possible to purchase iron and bronze. But you cannot create steel weapons. For that, you need to buy the Steel Forge. The Alloy Smelter allows you to use Moonstone to reduce the weight of armors and weapons. Luckily, your blacksmith has the Alloy Knowledge Skill, the other requirement for working with Moonstone. Click on the blue icon on the bottom to create a new armor. You find the list of items your blacksmith can forge based on his skills. In the top middle of the tab, you can select the material, the quality, and the possible alloys or crystals. Since your workshop has an iron forge, and the highest quality the blacksmith can produce is standard quality, you can create standard iron items. Select the chainmail from the list and choose iron for material, standard for quality, and moonstone for the compound. Below, you can check the details of the armor before forging. It shows the physical protection, weight, labor cost, durability, and material needed. Click on the blue icon below to create the chainmail. Good! The item appeared in the production queue. At the bottom of the icon, you can see how many turns the forging takes. Now, let's check the potion making. Click on the alchemy icon at the top. The alchemist lab is set up in a small chamber with a workplace for only one person. Because of the limited space, efficiency is reduced by 30%. Fortunately, you have three valuable pieces of equipment. The alembic set allows creating 20% stronger potions. The use of athanor is decreasing the labor need by 20%. The Allendale helps to reduce side effects by 20%. You also have some rare books providing benefits in potion making. Script of Poisons explains how to brew more effective poisons by adding new ingredients. The Great Volume of Reptiles describes how to reduce the side effects and increase the potion strength of breeding potions for reptiles. Alchemy of Substitutes describes how to replace rare ingredients. You can purchase books and equipment during the herbs market every August. Click on the green icon on the bottom to create a new potion. You find the list of potions your alchemist can brew based on his skill. Select the insectoid toxin. 
This poison inflicts double damage on insectoid monsters. You can further increase the effect by adding another ingredient described in the script of poisons. Click on the button of script of poisons. You can check the details of the poison before creating it. It shows the potion's strength, side effects, labor cost, material need, and any effects influencing these parameters. Click on the green icon below to create the insectoid toxin. Now, the toxin appeared in the production queue below. It's time to make another potion. The potion of cure is essential for magic treatments because it cures the abomination illness. Select the potion of cure. One of your books, The Great Volume of Reptiles, will provide a 30% bonus when using the potion on reptile monsters. Unfortunately, your alchemist is a dabbler who uses 50% more raw materials. You only have enough flame herb to make one potion. Luckily, one of your books reveals a method to reduce material need by 50% while decreasing the potion strength by only 25%. Click on the icon of Alchemy of Substitutes and the Great Volume of Reptiles and create two potions. Well done! You have completed the crafting tutorial. Check out all equipment used by the blacksmith and the alchemist in the encyclopedia. Oh! <laughs>